Can you see these tiny little structures found in the animal cell, which are also found in the plant cell? Well, these are what we call as organelles. So in today's bio world, we're going to cover syllabus 2.2b, that is, to describe some of the structures of organelles and state their functions. So let's begin. We'll begin with the largest organelle, that is the nucleus. You can find the nucleus both in the animal cell as well as the plant cell. When viewed under a scanning electron microscope, we can see that the nucleus is a spherical organelle. And on its surface, you can see pores which we call the nuclear pore. Now, if we use a transmission electron microscope, we will able to view that the nuclear membrane is actually a double membrane and inside the nucleus, you have fluid called the nucleoplasm. The nucleoplasm also contains the chromosomes as well as the nucleolus. The DNA inside the nucleus stores the genetic information for inheritance. That genetic code is transcribed into an mRNA and the mRNA can leave the nucleus via the nuclear pores. Meanwhile, the nucleolus can manufacture ribosomal RNA and that ribosomal RNA also can exit the nucleus via the nuclear pore. The ribosomal RNA will combine with proteins to form ribosomes and now the ribosome will translate the genetic code of the mRNA to synthesize proteins. So in this way, the nucleus can control the cell's activities. The second largest organelle is not found in the animal cell. It is found in the plant cell and that is the chloroplast. Through the scanning electron microscope image, we can conclude that the chloroplast is oval in structure and through the transmission electron microscope image, we can see that it has a smooth double membrane. Besides that, it has an internal membrane that is folded into structures which we call the thylakoid. The chloroplast also has fluid called the stroma. The outer membrane and the inner membrane form the smooth double membrane of the chloroplast. The thylakoid is the folded internal membrane. The thylakoid is stacked one on top of the other to form a structure known as the granum. The granum enables efficient organization of chlorophylls so that maximum absorption of light can occur to help increase the rate of photosynthesis. In the stroma, we will find the circular DNA, the 70S ribosome, as well as the enzymes necessary for photosynthesis. Although we say that chloroplast is found in plant cells, the truth of the fact is that not all plant cells have chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are only found in the cells of the leaves. This includes the palisade mesophyll cells, the spongy mesophyll cells, as well as the guard cells. The fourth cell is a cell that you have not learnt yet, that is the bundle sheath cells. The bundle sheath cells are also found in the leaf of plants. I will teach you the bundle sheet cells in chapter 6. Let's now discuss the third largest organelle in plant cells, but the second largest organelle in animal cells. This is the mitochondria. Here I have a scanning electron microscope image of the mitochondria and a transmission electron microscope image of the same organelle. Mitochondria is a rod-shaped organelle 
which has a double membrane, but the outer membrane is smooth while the inner membrane is folded to form a structure called the crystal. The liquid in the mitochondria is called the matrix. Just as how both the nucleus and the chloroplast have a double membrane, the mitochondria has a double membrane too. However, the inner membrane of the mitochondria is folded extensively to form cristae. In the membrane of the cristae, there will be phosphate granules which are actually the enzyme ATPase. This enzyme will help in the synthesis of ATP. The matrix of the mitochondria will contain more enzymes necessary for the process of aerobic respiration. Besides that, you can also find the 70S ribosomes as well as the circular DNA in the matrix. The major function of the mitochondria is for aerobic respiration, which is made up of oxidative phosphorylation, electron transport, and the Krebs cycle, which you will learn in detail in Chapter 5. The process of oxidative phosphorylation, which involves the electron transport, occurs in the cristae, while the Krebs cycle occurs in the matrix. Added to that, the mitochondria is also necessary for fatty acid oxidation. We move on now to another organelle which is most visible in plant cells, that is the vacuole. In plant cells, the vacuole is large and centrally located, causing most of the organelles to be pushed to the side. In animal cells, there are vacuoles, but since they are small and many, they are called vesicles. The structure of the plant vacuole is made up of a membrane known as the tonoplast. This organelle has a single membrane, and this membrane is permeable to water so water can diffuse in by osmosis and the water will accumulate within the vacuole. This enables the vacuole to carry out its first function that is to control the cell's osmotic concentration. Now once the cell becomes turgid due to osmosis, the vacuole helps to carry out the second function. This is plant growth. The turgor pressure within the cell can help young plant cells elongate through a process known as vacuolization. So as the plant cells elongate, the plant grows. The liquid within the vacuole, which is called the cell sap, can store nutrients, dissolved gases, waste, as well as pigment. So, this enables the vacuole to carry out its third function, that is the function of storage. Vacuoles, or better known as vesicles in animal cells, can form new organelles. For example, a vesicle can become a lysosome if it contains hydrolytic enzymes. Now, the lysosome has many functions, one of which is autolysis. This is a process to help remove old and aged cells in our system. When a cell has become old, the pH of the cytoplasm becomes acidic. This causes the membrane of the lysosome to become permeable to the hydrolytic enzymes. Once the hydrolytic enzymes diffuse into the cytoplasm, the cell will become destroyed. The vesicles also can become contractile vacuoles in aquatic microorganisms. In an aquatic environment, water will diffuse into the contractile vacuole causing the vacuole to expand. Once 
the vacuole has expanded to its maximum size, it will contract to expel the excess water. This process is known as osmoregulation. Another example of vacuoles in animal cells are structures known as phagosomes and autophagic vesicles. Phagosomes form in cells that carry out phagocytosis. So, when there is a bulk molecule available near the cell, what happens is phagocytosis will help to move the molecule into the cell forming a phagosome. The phagosome is a vesicle. Sometimes, organelles within the cell become old and damaged. So then, a vesicle will form around the organelle known as an autophagic vesicle. The objective of forming a phagosome or an autophagic vesicle is to help eventually destroy the bulk molecule or the organelle. So you can see the vacuoles are necessary for digestion. Now, let me discuss with you an organelle that is only found in animal cells, that is the centriole. The centriole is a pair of cylinder-like organelles located next to the nucleus. Under further observation, we find that the centrioles are actually made up of nine sets of triplet microtubules which are arranged in a ring-like pattern. So usually, we call this the 9 plus 0 pattern. The function of the centriole is to form spindle fibers. These are the white lines that you see in this animation, which is necessary to help pull chromosomes or chromatids to the opposite poles during cell division. So, for today's video, that's all from me. I'll see you soon in Organelles Part 2. Bye-bye.